Greetings, unsettled souls. Well, my theme music has kicked in late, so we can only hope that the whole show works as well. But at least it is the same song. Guys, I've told you before, running the show by, by myself has been tedious at best. But friends, I am here. <clears throat> Gear might not be working as I want it to, or I might not be working it as I should be. But in any event, I am here. And I'm waiting for some people to trickle in. We may have an individual joining us uh, over the uh, internet. I'm not sure. So I'm going to give this person time to trickle in. And I need to make uh, a small announcement regarding uh, Saturday. And I've thought about how I wanted to do this in a number of ways. Because I am a libertarian who, when they do this massive Fukushima update, I am largely talking to independents, Greens, and probably more Democrats than I normally talk to. Because, <clears throat> while right about most things, uh, much of the conservative and libertarian uh, party is on the wrong side of nuclear. So... I've decided I'm going to tie what I'm going to say, and I'm going to get to all the Fukushima stuff, don't worry. I'm going to tie this into a way that matters for you who care about nuclear issues. Let's say that you absolutely hate Donald Trump. Okay. You have to understand two things. The way that the left side of the aisle wants to govern us involves trying to cure the provable lie of global warming. But even again, even if you believe in global warming, and I don't because it's provable, not, provably not happening, even if you do, okay, fine. The solution given by the Democrat Party is to have nuclear power stations peppered around this country like snowflakes in Green Bay during football season. Now, I'm not going to come out here and lie and try and sugarcoat it and say that Donald Trump is on the right side of this issue just because I support him. He isn't. He, he is also a pro-nuke. However, Donald Trump is not pushing something called the Green New Deal that will put nuclear power plants in the backyard of everyone! So regardless of what you might think of Donald Trump, it might behoove you to support the uh, Stop the Steal, to support, uh, well, there's obviously there, there's cheating going on. Uh, to what level the courts will see it, we don't know. But I am going on December the 12th. And I'm doing something special that I think only this show has done. What if you listening to this? I bet you're listening to this and you're saying, Man, Sam, if I could go to Washington, D.C. like you're going to do Saturday. Man, if I could do that, I'd make a sign and remember. Okay? I'll put you in the driver's seat. Anyone who donates to this show, I already have one person who has uh, taken me up on this. Anyone who donates to the show, at the correct views on hotmail.com through PayPal. Let me know what you would say. What would your sign say if you could stand where I'm going to stand at what might be the biggest political gathering of 2020? What would you say? All the major news networks are going to be there. All the TV crews are going to be there. If you had a chance to do what I'm going to do, man, you'd do so much better than I would. You know what? I believe you. You probably would. It's not that hard. People say all lives matter. I don't know. Mine probably doesn't. Okay, you can probably do a whole lot better. So tell me. Tell me, what would you say if you donate anything to the correct views at Hotmail.com through PayPal? I'll put your message on a sign. Now, I'm not doing anything stupid. I'm not doing anything mean. I'm not doing anything hateful. So feel free to ask. But if you donate anything to the show, I will put your message on a sign, and I will carry it for some ample length of time. I will walk by the major news networks. I'll put your, I'll put your name on it if you want. What's your message in all of this? What would you say if your voice could be heard? I'm going there December the 12th on Saturday, and you can help me uh, with the costs of doing that. Because this show 
I, I'm blessed. I work for myself. That said, this show is one of many jobs. And when I do this, excuse me, when I do this, it's usually because I could be doing something else. So make sure that you make it possible for me to continue to be able to go to D.C. and to Harrisburg and to fight for things that matter. And for those of you who do not care at all whatsoever about the election and you are dying of boredom, it is now time for the massive Fukushima update, as promised. Uh, scientific reports, this is from Nature.com. Landslide tritium leakage over through years from Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant and the relationship between countermeasures and contaminated water. Now, if that sounds like a bit of a choppy sentence, and you're wondering if I'm drunk, unfortunately I'm not, um, that is the translation from Japan. And as we've said many times here, as Hank Hanegraaff likes to say, when you take one language and move it into a receptor language, uh, you sometimes get sentences that you can tell where English may not have been the original language that it was written in. Um, it's a very long, uh, it's a very, rather long piece here, but I will read the abstract to you. Again, this is nature.com, and if you want the name, which again is clunky. Landslide tritium leakage over through years from Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant and relationship between countermeasures and contaminated water. Long. There has been, the abstract says, tritium groundwater leakage to the land side of Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant since 2013. Groundwater has continuously collected by the end of 2013 to 2019 with an average tritium concentration of approximately 20 becquerels per liter. I'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> Based on tritium data published by TEPCO, that is Tokyo, that is GE, where you never want to invest, the postulated source of the leakage was leaks from a contaminated water tank that occurred from 2013 to 2014, or two, a leak of tritium that had spread widely over an impermeable layer under the site. Based on our results, seaside and landslide tritium leakage monitoring systems sh should be strengthened. Now, again, this is very long. If I was to read all of this, it would probably take me about two or three hours. But suffice to say, I've given you the source in a nutshell, and I have not read every word, uh, in a nutshell, what it is saying is that not only are the, are the news organizations not covering this, it's far worse for the average person's health than COVID-19 will ever be. And I'm not saying that COVID is a hoax. I'm not one of those people. I'm just saying that what we talk about on this show, the, the routine releases will sicken far more people than COVID will. And this is fact. Um, to what degree, like, you know, not everyone gets cancer. But to what degree, we don't know. But it sickens everyone. It brings our immune system low. Your immune system gets low enough, in theory, you could get uh, COVID-19. But I could just hear idiots on my comment line. That guy said that radiation causes COVID-19. Yeah, and that's, that's exactly what I meant. But, um... It does say that this isn't being tested well. And not only are you not hearing about it, but one of the reasons is because it takes so long to realize, hey, wait a minute, there is a massive concentration of tritium here. Where has this come from? It is accumulating because the site isn't being monitored and tested as it should be. And if you add that to the fact that so much of this is prone to cover up anyway because it's tied to General Electric, it doesn't take a genius to figure out just where that's going. So you're going to want to make sure you do look at that. Um, also here, I thought this was pretty interesting. Forests affected by Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident. This is NHK World Japan. Their site uh, definitely got, got the update, but now it looks like everybody else's site. I used to like the other layout because it was, uh, it was classic to just that. Anybody else agree? I'm talking to myself here. I know it. Forestry was once a thriving industry in Fukushima until the 2011 nuclear disaster struck. More than 70% of the prefecture is covered with trees, but large areas have been abandoned or neglected. That's because a lot of vegetation, and this is why you need to be careful eating mushrooms, uh, a lot of vegetation, including shroomies, 
tend to absorb radiation like a sponge. So, <clears throat> you know, a lot of times these things will show up there. Not to mention they're also talking about <clears throat> the industry as a whole since people can't. It's regrettable, I didn't even imagine things were so bad, says forester Akimoto Kimio, who visited a plantation in Tomoika, about 10 kilometers away from the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. That might be te Tamioka. It is Tamioka. Hey, I've gotten a lot better with my, uh, with my Japan. My Japanese. My, my Japan. I've gotten a lot better with my Japan. Ever since an earthquake and tsunami triggered a triple meltdown at the facility, the forest has been abandoned. Some of its most prized pine trees, more than 50 years old, have died. Now, you can say what you want to about the level of poison that is or isn't in the area, but that one sentence there should be enough to frighten anybody with a thinking part of their brain. Some of its most prized pine trees, I repeat, more than 50 years old, have died. <clears throat> Akimoto 72 heads a local forestry cooperative uh, that was re relocated elsewhere in the prefecture following the nuclear accident. But after nine years and eight months, it returned to Tamioka on November 4th. The forestry cooperative ships timber and manages maintenance, such as thinning out trees. Akimoto oversees about 2,000 he hectares, about 60% of which is an area subject to an evacuation level due to high radiation. Now, an order due to high levels of radiation. Now, he thinks that the forestry, the fact that trees do absorb radiation, that that is going to allow people to return to the area. It says, but unattended areas of woodland can pose risks, <clears throat> including fires. A contaminated, a contaminated forest fire would be particularly hazardous in the event of a landslide. Now, they put that all in there, you know, in one blah, blah, blah. If that was written in America, in America that would have really gotten five or six paragraphs, and I want to explain why. Mudslides and forest fires are, I'm not going to say they're not common in the United States, of course they are, but there are areas to which that never happens. They hardly have any trees, for instance. These things are so common in Japan that they're, you know, they just assume that you do understand the concern of a forest fire and a mudslide in a nuclear radiation zone. And most people listening to the sound of my voice now most likely do not. <clears throat> the forest fire would send problems unimaginably high into the atmosphere and spread them all over the jet stream. It would be a travesty for the area. All of that radiation is going to resettle. Most of it has not depleted due to age. 2011 was like two seconds ago compared to some of these elements and how long their half-life is. Mudslides could bring down God only knows how much contaminated soil onto wherever it accumulates and then rainwater could wash it anywhere. And then that's just off the top of my head. Some of the problems which could be seen. Our mission is to take good care of our hometown forest and enhance the surrounding environment, he says. Now, the problem there is that those who want to enhance the environment also talk about ridiculous things like trying to get people to move back to Fukushima. That doesn't seem to be the case there. It's not quite that dumb. It's not dumb enough to get the dumb deal of the day. But this is... Friends... Uh, dumb deal of the day. Now, don't forget, you're going to be able to vote for the Dove's Cap of the Year. I'm going to do that sometime before Christmas. I will get that posted for everyone. Out of the 12 stories that have won the Dove's Cap of the Month, you get to pick the Dove's Cap of the Year. That said, we always have a dumb deal of the day, and this is it. Why? Because this proves that Japan has learned nothing from any of this hardship and any of this despair, which we have covered almost since the day it started, they have learned 
nothing. Listen to this. Kyoto News. Japan court nixes approval of post-Fukushima nuclear safety steps. The very practices which could prevent this from ever happening again, which they were warned the first time to do, are not being listened to again. It's from Osaka. A Japanese court on Friday, for the first time, revoked the government's approval of operating a nuclear plant under new safety regulations developed in the wake of the 2011 nuclear disaster. The Osaka District Court ruled in favor of about 130 plaintiffs who claimed that the number three and number four reactors... Oh, 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 oh! I see how this works. I, I, gave the dunce, I gave the dumb D correctly, but I gave it in the wrong direction. The people actually won this. The industry did not want... The industry was trying to say that these safety steps were... Ah, okay, I, I got it slightly wrong. I, I, it's, it's more clear now. Okay, it's, it's, it's the dumb D stands, but to, to be more clear than I was. Finally, finally, the list of safety steps that the people are demanding are being taken into account instead of the very small list of safety changes which the industry wanted. That's, that's a more clear way to put this. Again, it didn't win the dunce cap of the month due to that complexity, I guess, in part. <clears throat> and the cost of sending anything to Japan. In the ruling... President Judge Hajemi Morikagi said the Nuclear Regulation Authority safety screening has errors and flaws that should not be overlooked, and it estimates needed to factor in a potentially much larger earthquake around the plant. And again, why did I give the dummy to the industry? Because they are trying to say that the kind of earthquake which need to be addressed isn't. Now, of course, the whole thing should be shut down immediately and put into court shutdown and Im stopped immediately. That, that goes without saying. However, they've got this, you know, pink elephant in the freaking living room that they're going to have to address in some way. So they're saying, no, we're not going to let you do this because you're not allowing for a big enough earthquake. And this is important because we've covered this a lot, but I want to say it again. The Fukushima meltdowns, some of them started at the point when the earthquake hit. Even if the tsunami had never come in, there would have been a meltdown at Fukushima because the earthquake prevented power from getting to the plant. They could not bring it to the roads being destroyed. There wasn't enough generators at the plant. Some of them were destroyed, etc., etc. So the earthquake alone is enough to cause another Fukushima. And the Authorities were trying to say otherwise. That's why you listen, because I make the complex easy. Or at least as easy as it's going to get. The plaintiffs claimed the utility known as CAPCO had underestimated quake hazards using an, ins an insufficient formula in calculating the so-called standard of ground motion or the maximum shaking that re reactors could withstand. This is important because idiots often like to troll my comment line quoting these authorities as sources to believe when the courts are saying, no, these sources are actually wrong and the people are right, which, of course, is the truth. So it's very good that that's happening. I hope we're clear. The nuclear watchdog countered the 2017 regulatory approval based on KEPCO's estimate for the maximum possible ground motion calculated by such elements as past quake data and geological structures of its 656 gallon was appropriate, adding that their claim lacks scientific rationality. So in other words, they're still trying to push it at any cost. And yes, I see the comment here. I did promise I would tell you what a Becquerel was. Uh, a Becquerel is, as I've said a million times, a tiny nuclear reaction that takes place inside the human body. When Becquerel, they go off one per second. Becquerel does not mean second, but it's a handy way to think of it. Each of those little tiny explosions can hit another cell. And then another cell won't mutate or won't die. And the name for that is cancer. 20 Becquerels would be that happening 20 times per second. Friends, you are listening to The Correct Views. Once again, if you'd like to donate, please do so. I, I really appreciate it. I do a lot of work on these. Uh, my name is... My name. 
My email address is thecorrectviews at hotmail.com through PayPal. Good night, friend. God, God bless, and I will work on doing a better job of speaking my Japan, as it were.